Hello everyone, this is Shane Gibson with RackN and this is a quick uh, tech video on a new technical preview feature uh, called Virtual Media ISO Boot we've added to Digital Rebar. Uh, please note this is a technical preview and it's subject to change, enhancements, fixes, features, problems, rough edges, etc, etc. Uh, to begin with, uh, let me describe the problem. So. In some environments, uh, network policy or security policy may not allow DHCP uh, boot path or may not allow IP helper or DHCP relays to allow uh, the standard path that we use at Digital Rebar to bring systems under control and manage the lifecycle of these platforms. That path is typically done through the in-band uh, boot of DHCP Pixie path into our sledgehammer image, control the machines, do installs, handle BIOS firmware, RAID configuration, all the various things that we support and do uh, with the system. In some cases, you may need to attach a, a ISO image to the baseboard management controller, the BMC, and then boot from that virtual media path. And that's what this process describes. I'm going to jump into this pretty quickly uh, into the technical side of things and do everything through, through the CLI and show you the results in our web portal. And as I go through the process, I'll explain things a little bit in more detail because there's a lot of downtime with some of these commands. To start with, uh, if you go to our normal documentation site, uh, this page hasn't been published yet. It should be up in the next few days. Uh, by the time you see this, it probably should be published. But essentially in our main documentation site under the uh, operations pages, so the digital rebar provision operations pages, there's a new page here called virtual media ISO booting and this provides a lot of uh, additional in-depth detail and information on this process. To begin with, we're going to start with a machine that we have uh, currently running as e e ESXi 700, uh, but we want to take con back control of this machine and boot it into Sledgehammer, but we want to boot it into Sledgehammer through the virtual media ISO attach and a dynamically generated ISO image. If you note, this machine is booted uh, through uh, it actually is originally booted through DHCP with an assignment of 92.208 as the IP address. We're going to assign it a 92.199 through a new network data structure uh, and assign it through a static IP within Sledgehammer. So a Sledgehammer will boot in with, up with a static IP instead of a DHCP IP address. Alright, so first off what we're going to do uh, is go ahead and uh, set a special parameter called uh, boot virtual uh, ISO and we're going to set this value to true. This is the main uh, parameter that um, this feature interacts with. By turning this feature uh, or this parameter to true it turns the virtual media ISO boot process on. Every time that we boot into Sledgehammer, it will try and dynamically generate a custom ISO for the machine and do the virtual media attach process for us automatically. Those dynamic ISOs are generated in this uh, TFTP boot dynamic uh, ISOs directory in the standard uh, var lib uh, DR provision uh, production operating uh, install environment. And if we do a uh, long listing here, we see there's nothing in this directory at the moment. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to assign the uh, network data structure that will be used by Sledgehammer. It's injected into the kernel and in the NITRD uh, bootstrap process to assign the static assignments. And we see that our static addressing is assigned here as uh, 92.199. And to do that, we're going to apply this uh, data structure to the machine. So we're going to create, uh, set the parameter network data to the value of this JSON file. And then once that's done, if we take a look at our machine object, you'll see that we now have a boot virtual media set to true here. That was added just a moment ago. And then we have the uh, network data. If we scroll down here far enough, network data now has this data structure that describes uh, the configuration of the network. We can take a look at the status of the current um, virtual media mount uh, process. And this is uh, that downtime I was mentioning earlier. Anytime we execute commands against the out-of-band uh, BMC control path, in this case via the IPMI, uh, red we call it the IPMI mode for legacy reasons, but we're using the Redfish protocol, it's slow. 
We can see here, however, though, there's no uh, virtual media inserted, no image defined. So how do we get an image defined and a virtual media attached? How does that magic happen? Well, remember, we looked at this directory. There's nothing here. And if you recall earlier, I said, as soon as a machine transitions into the Sledgehammer Boot M, what's going to happen is a dynamic ISO will be generated and customized with that network data. So to do that, we're going to switch this machine into the discover base uh, uh, workflow. So we're going to transition it where it's currently uh, booted into lo from the local disk. We're going to transition it uh, into discover base, which then changes the boot M to sledgehammer. That's how we're going to trigger the boot M change in this case. Uh, if your machine was already in sledgehammer, you would have to do something like switch it to local and then switch it back to sledgehammer. Uh, if you have a workflow set on the machine, you may need to unset the workflow before you can set the boot M individually, uh, just how the, the system works. If you're using workflow, then the system assumes you're also controlling the boot M transitions uh, through the workflow changes as the workflow describes the changes. All right, so we got a response back after many, many, many hours of waiting uh, because VMCs are slow. And you'll see that if we on the machine object, discover base and the stage and boot M have been set now. If we look at the machine, we see the machine has rebooted. Uh, and if we look at, actually, I'm going to start the command here again. We're going to run that uh, status command again. But if we also look at the web interface and we look at the attached media, we'll see that the attached media now has this uh, path described in the image uh, path file and the connection status is connected. And we see that actually reflected from our DRPCLI command uh, using the redfish command, inserted true in the image. This is the dynamic uh, ISO that was generated. And we see that it's using the machine's uh, UUID address. So we can see that starts with BB1EAD. If we go to the machine object, take a look at it, and we see that indeed BB1EAD, blah, 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 that's our machine that we're controlling here. Now, if we take a look here, we'll see we've got this new directory. Matches the MAC address. Let's see, So if we cd to bb1ead, we'll see that we have a sledgehammer that refers to the boot M that we um, specified, sledgehammer going into sledgehammer, and it created this dynamic boot ISO for the sledgehammer boot M through this boot path. Uh, I have to see if I... Oh, uh, I do have the uh, U mount goes. Sorry, previous playing around here. So, just for a uh, reference example here, uh, if we mount the boot ISO to mount, um, we can then uh, edit the boot grub, uh, grub.config. And we'll see that this is the grub config that the ISO boots from. And we'll see that we have. Uh, these provisioner IP with our 199 address, provisioner.gateway, provisioner interface, all of these were dynamically uh, inserted into the ISO image for us. And that ISO is custom and specific to this uh, single machine. One of the other reasons we don't like this path is you would have, you have a thousand machines, you would have to create a thousand custom ISOs. And even though they're only 50 meg in size, I think, uh, 51 meg in size, uh, that still adds up. And if you have a fatter payload that you're using, that adds up a lot more of storage space as opposed to storing Sledgehammer once and serving that. If we take a look at our machine, we see the machine has actually booted into Sledgehammer in the background. We saw, s you may have caught some out of the corner of your eyes, there are some transition changes as the workflow ran through its stages and the machine is now actually booted into the virtual media uh, process, or booted through the virtual media ISO attached. So uh, there we go. There is a real fast, brief uh, method for booting uh, into uh, Sledgehammer in this case. Uh, using our two-stage process, the ISO only contains the stage one uh, kernel and NITRD. And then based on that uh, provisioner uh, web interface, do we still have that up here? Yes, so basically this provisioner.web interface tells uh, DRP 
uh, when it or sledgehammer when it boots where to go get its stage two bits for the uh, final stage two kernel and in NITRD for the full sledgehammer payload. So the initial boot contains this stripped down lightweight version uh, and then we amend uh, the stage two bits to that. Now real quick if you want to um, take all of this stuff off and put it back into normal operation it's very simple go back to the machine we're going to uh, use the UX in this case but basically we remove the boot virtual ISO uh, you may or may not want to uh, change the network data structure. Uh, if we want to go back to DHCP in this case, then we want to remove this network data structure. If you want Sledgehammer to always boot and use this addressing assignment, uh, this version of Sledgehammer and going forward, Sledgehammer supports this data structure to give you static IP address assignments, a new, new feature capability in Sledgehammer. Uh, but since we want to go back to using our standard DHCP boot path, We'll go ahead and remove that, save the machine, and uh, that's it, really. The next time we boot into Sledgehammer, it'll go through the standard Pixie DHCP boot path. If you wanted to be pedantic, uh, you can uh, remove the uh, dynamically generated ISOs, or you might want to keep those around to use as an emergency ISO boot path, whatever. Um, that's it, though. Uh, again, that's Shane Gibson, RackN and a new virtual media ISO booting path. Thank you very much.